This week on the Great Debaters Contest Golden Series, we feature gender inequality. Season 6 of the Great Debaters Contest is heating up and we're glad you could join us to catch all the action. I am your host, Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Yumbo. Our motion today is young women are key to Africa's economic development sustainability. We have Starehe Boys Centre versus Ofofa Jericho High School. Who will be the victor? We'll find out in just a moment. Proposal number one, the floor is yours. You have three minutes. Hello to you all. Well, my name is Jack Nyange from Starry Boys Center, and yesterday night was quite a busy night for me. I had a dream, and in that dream, I had a wife. Well, not so pretty, but quite young enough for me. And we happened to be in the kitchen, and we were discussing about issues of our life and stuff. And she was like, hey, Jack, I'm so sick and tired of you. Every day I do everything for you. I do the dishes, I take care of the house, I take care of the animals, I even take care of you. What do you do for me? What do you do in this house? What do you take care of? So I was like, hey babe, when I look into your eyes, I just see a world of color. Sometimes I wish I was your teardrops, born in your eyes, living in your cheeks, and dying in your lips. So basically, I looked at her. And as expected, she was smiling. She was like, then all of a sudden, get out! And I slowly turned and left the room. Well, hypersensitive, that is the word. That is the word to describe young women. Now, it is this hypersensitivity that is the key when it comes to Africa's economic development sustainability. That hypersensitivity is what we need, and that is what makes them the key to Africa's economy. Now, let me just describe the motion a bit so that you understand what I'm talking about. This is Africa, and when you're talking about Africa's economic development sustainability, it won't be wise if we ignore agriculture, which is the biggest economic sector in Africa. So if we are to talk about young women being the key to Africa's economic development, we have to relate young women with agriculture first before we get to any other sector. Understood? Now, I use to think that, okay, for my definition, a young woman is anything between 18 and 39, which is basically young enough to work, young enough to do what is needed. I used to think that my brains were the most important organ until one day I just sat back and asked myself, look, look what's telling you that. So that's when I decided to sit back and let my eyes do more of the thinking. And truly, they did not let me down. My eyes came across the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization's research findings on the importance and contribution of young women to Africa's economic development sustainability. They say that 70% of food production, 50% of animal husbandry, over 60% of marketing, and almost 100% of food processing activities is undertaken by young women in Africa. Now, you may ask yourselves, why young women? Why not young men? Why not old men? Why not old women? But the key is this. Young women have a double affirmative action effect. They have a double advantage. One, they are young. And young people have a special inclusion in the constitution. Number two, they are women. They are females. They are the minority. Another factor that gives them the advantage of, um, of that. So, honestly speaking, ignoring women is like standing in a football pitch and watching as a ball gets bigger and bigger and asking yourself, why is that ball getting bigger and bigger? It's only after it hits your face that you'll know that it's actually coming towards you. <laughs> and with that, I rest my case. Papa Jericho, we'll hear your opening statements. You have three minutes. Salutations to you all. I'm Trey Gilbert from Papa Jericho High School, here to oppose the motion. Young women are the key to Africa's economic development. I beg to differ with my fellow opponent. Everything that he has said, maybe apart from his name and apart from the dream. But I beg to differ with everything that he has said. From my b basic biology, a female, a woman who is the fairer sex is a female human with X, XX chromosomes. A young woman is a woman in the age bracket of 20 to 39. That is from the accordance of the UN, United Nations. A key is something that enables you to achieve a certain goal a certain goal that is very substantial factor, in which, in this case, is a, is, is, I beg to differ with my proposers, is not a young woman. 
Africa is the second most populated country. Is the second most populated country in the world, continent in the world, with 54 country states and the second largest mass. Economic development refers to the adoption of agricultural transaction from agricultural based to industrial based. Sustainability refers to the integration of the three pillars, i.e., which are economical, environmental, and social. My fellow opponents said women are the ones involved in agricultural sector. Women did, do indeed work on small farms in the farms, but it is this very size that they will not be a key in the future. A 2.5 to 4 percent increase in agricultural production is not much to sustain us in the future. When with agriculture as a third percent of our gross domestic product, one of one percent of this is the small reason why women don't get loans. All we need is an inclusive society, an inclusive society for economic development sustainability. During the creation, man and woman were created, not Victor and Adam, not Stephanie and Eve. There was a purpose as to why it was man and a woman, Adam and Eve. We should all rise for an inclusive generation, an inclusive generation in which both men and women are going to help us. We, men are going to help women by giving them loans, little deeds, micro loans, and even opportunities to develop. We should not look at this, at, the, at our future from one's perspective. Yes, women are the key, but men are the door. It is important for our continent to leverage all possible human energy, maximizing growth opportunities that are presented by both men and women. We should have an all-inclusive society, a society that involves both men and women, not women alone, for economic development sustainability. I tap out. We'll hear rebuttals now. Starehe, you have the floor. My brother, I have the sense that most doors are opened by keys. So I don't understand how, if the man is the door and the woman is the key, why won't the door open? Is there a problem? I just simply don't understand this. Now, my name is Victor Kimondo, and I am here to propose why young women are the key to Africa's economic development sustainability. Young women are a more reliable and productive workforce due to their altruistic nature and micromanagement mentality. What is micromanagement? It is the management of small amount of resources. Young women have the ability to do so simply because of the maternal instinct that is in them. They might not know it because a young woman might be able to manage her affairs at a company, still manage to go for parties, attend the university, and pass well because she has the ability to do so many things at, at such a time. The ratio of success of African women is that 9 out of every 11 women who try their hand at business and entrepreneurship succeed. But that's not the most important thing, no. 67% of African young women contribute to that 9 out of 11. Now, look at this. This young, vibrant, witty, beautiful women of our beautiful continent are contributing to such a large part of our economy. And this is how. Take Bethlehem Alemu. She is an Ethiopian woman, 32 years of age, and she was named a global leader by the World Economic Forum. Why? Because Bethlehem decided to take a chance on a business that was not so profitable, selling of shoes without a global brand to help you. Her shoes are now selling in 55 countries, and Ethiopia is now having such great revenue caused by such a small business idea by one young woman. Now, if I was named Glo a global leader at the age of 32 and had that kind of income, I would retire. But then again, she didn't. She helped her people. She built hand pumps in Ethiopia. She brought water to the people who didn't have it. That erases the problem of water. That erases the problem of irrigation in their community. Now they can focus on developing their economic stability. They can sustain it 
thanks to her. Now, women own 10% of the African continent's landmass. Yet, as you have obviously heard, they contribute to 50% of animal husbandry, 60% marketing, and 70% food produce. Now, I think that statistic doesn't make sense unless you're a woman. You can make something out of nothing. And we need these women. That is where they're the key. They are what is missing in our development economically. Thank you. Ofo Federico, you are up next. You have three minutes as well. My name is Jesse Mogere from Ofafa Jericho, strongly opposing the motion that young women are the key to Africa's economic development sustainability. Women need to be taken out of their traditional role where they are basically the caretakers of the family. You see, young women are not the future of Africa's economy just because they are fulfilling their traditional role. It's quite the opposite. The fact that women still continue to work in agriculture, as they said, and they have still to continue to stand out in the more competitive areas of the economy, this shows that they are not yet ready to have an impact over the economy. And this job, securing the future of Africa's economy as a whole, is still in the hands of men. Yes, it is true. Young women have the multiplier effect on our economy. And well, they make up 70% of the labor force. See, this untapped potential, women are this key to the door of economic and development sustainability. If we give loans to women, if we give them a title deed, perhaps train them and learn from them, we will for sure move from that untold story and could be the next big story of the next decade. Proposition, if we coalesce both gender, make it an inclusive economy, economy we will break the social econ economic development boundary. I'm not negating anything, but the statistics don't matter to me if it's not all inclusive. There had to be a man somewhere. Somewhere there had to be a young woman. For too long now, I've had the same story. Girl child on broadcasts, front pages of magazines, billboards, headlines, everywhere. 20 years to come, the boy child will be left out, and much as this is as true as the gospel, it's also as clear as glass. See, variety is this spice of life that we need, and including everyone is just as sweet. Now, some people say that men are wise and others are otherwise. But the bone of contention lies with the predicament and the discrimination, the negation of both gender. The girl is the mother to the woman. The girl is literally pregnant with the woman inside her. And the boy is the father to the man. The only key in making it an inclusive economy with the aim of sustain. Of, of sustaining this development. Imagine the impacts family, family chamas make because it's all inclusive. They invest on their generations and the multiplier effect is dope, awesome, aka perfect. Proposers have been asked what they mean when they say that women are a minority and the opposition have been asked whether they feel that women and men are equal in their contribution towards the economic development of Africa. Proposal number three, you have three minutes. Okay, the question is that how do young women, how do you call them the minority? One thing you have to understand is that the constitution of Kenya understands that Africa is a, is a continent that has lived on stereotypes for the last 40 years, and we've all grown believing that women are inferior to men, so that's why we call them minorities. But the government and the constitution has met out simple positions to make sure that women are no longer a minority. That's the basis of affirmative action. I remember when I was six years old, a few years back, and my parents were really young, and they happened to get a visit from one of their business partners who gave me 250 shillings note. 
I gave one to my father and the other one to my mother. When I was 10, I requested for my money. I got it from my mother, but believe you me, up to date, I've never set my eyes on the 50 shilling note I gave to my father. This is because society has a perspective of women making the trust with the gender. Understand why? Move across this Republic of Kenya. We have a money transfer system, M-Pesa. Most of the agents, M-Pesa agents, are young ladies who are contributing massively to the economy. Look at Tabitha Njoroge. She's the CEO of Keroche Breweries and started a company in 1997. These are big risks. Let's accept the fact that if Tabitha Njoroge became the CEO of Kenya Breweries Limited, we'll be expecting as much beer as tea right now. Another thing I want you to ask yourself is, this is Kenya. Why do we have Kenya Women Finance Trust, KWFT, and we don't have Kenya Men Finance Trust? Yeah, that tells it all. Women are the trust of the gender. You know, the economic positivity brought about by these women in the economy is a fact worth relishing upon. These women have resided to the mantra that thou art woman, thou art power. They are always at peace with themselves, and if need be, they always roll, they always roll their sleeves. They drive four-wheel vehicles, open beer bottles with their teeth, gulp it down from the bottle, buy lands like they are trying to buy this motion, and in short, they are the lioness in their jungles. If you think otherwise concerning this, then I think this is not a matter worth debating, because to any self-respecting socialist, praise for such dissatisfaction is incohesible outrage, because the power against young woman empowerment is the power of memory against forgetting. Secondary poverty. Women around age 40 to 50 tend to suffer secondary poverty because they can't strike a work balance in their life. It's very hard for a woman to please her boss, her husband, her kids, all at the same time. It's difficult. You can't strike a work-life balance. But women between age 20 to 30 have proved to us that the only thing a man can raise against them is money and temperature and not their voices. You know why? This is because young women tend to have a work-life balance. That's why we believe young women are the key to economic development in Africa. Take the likes of Oreo Kolo. She started Mzalendo to monitor government accountability. Through that, the economy of our republic has been meted out to such a successful one because she can strike a work-life balance and because she's young. You know, if you don't believe in whatever I've said, you are self-righteous and blind in your own belief that you are in, in a movement to enslave Africa and deprogress human empowerment. You are in fact in league with the darkest and most reactionary forces whose ethnicities as records attest are unknown in the human past. You know what I'm saying? Sense. Take it in. Thank you. Oh, for Federico, you have three minutes to respond. Tree climbers climb trees down up. On Kundi Wenya Kirura from Ofofa Jericho High School, here and now, opposing that young women are the key to Africa's economic development sustainability. It is true, however, that women, especially the young, are the key to Africa, Africa's development sustainability. Therefore, does that mean that I should leave the stage? No, I won't leave. Now listen, you say, Ms. Alemu, at the age of 32, had been acknowledged as one of the top sellers of shoes in Africa. Now, in the year 2011, Nike Foundation, the shoe, the shoe, the shoe foundation, it carried out a survey and established that only in Kenya that investing in young women alone will bring about a 3.2 billion US dollar added to the Kenyan economy. Now, I didn't actually understand why they only took this effect to only young women. Why not young women and young men? Look at a family to Archie. Now, what side do we support? We support the inclusivity of both genders. Wangare Madai worked during the Arab, Daniel Arab Moy's era, and thereby she only worked alone. I was wondering whether what would have happened if both Wangare Madai and the young men of that time worked together. She was able alone to draw up Oprah Winfrey into the Kenyan subsidies and therefore uplifting Kenya. Now if she, I was thinking if she worked both with the young men, this will in turn raise the Kenyan bar to Okay, we'll hear closing submissions now. Proposition, you have a minute. Hello once again. See, a good night's sleep 
is when you hug your teddy bear and go to sleep. A horrific night on the other side is when your teddy bear hugs you back. Now, when we all talk about economic development sustainability of Africa, we all intended it to be a crystal stair. But instead, it's just like a stared crystal. Why? Because we did not include young women in the making. See, giving women a greater voice helps encourage long-term thinking and discourages conflict, which is one of the main reasons for Africa's plight in the second half of the 20th century. The feminization of politics has been identified by Steven Pinker as one of the causes for a decline in conflict. See, man is the only being that cuts trees, makes paper, and writes save trees on them. Woman, on the other hand, is the only being that tries to slam a revolving door. She tries to do something after something, never giving up. She moves on and on despite anything that comes her way. And that is why we believe that they are the key to Africa's economic development sustainability. Now, to our opposers, the men sitting on my left, I believe that you have wronged the young women in this hall by saying a lot of ill things about them. But I know the questions you want to ask me is this. Is it too late now to say sorry? No, it isn't. Papa Jericho, we'll hear your closing submission. You have a minute. The only key to this door of economic development sustainability is to have inclusiveness. We should not empower one gender and leave the other. Remember, the key is to the men to unleash this potential. Now, men should allow more women to own land, banks, and banks should offer more services for women for saving and investing. Now, can you imagine if we had this all-inclusive chama, or rather this investment group of both, gender, of both genders, copying it from our Asian brothers who actually sustain the business of the family by including the whole family? If African families can do the same and invest their resources wisely, where it is all inclusive, female and male working together, this will jumpstart economic development, which is sustainable. Africa, let us embrace one another, male or female, and exploit the many resources found in our continent together as one. And lastly, what do you mean? Thank you. Starehe boys, we draw conclusion from evidence, and that's exactly what you've done. And I think we can learn a lot from you that it's not about how much evidence we come with, but a question of how we analyze the evidence that we have. Jack, you're just awesome. You know, listening to you is just excellent. You know, uh, everything that you say matters a lot. It's, it's like a story writer. Every word means something. Every word that you speak means something, and it was awesome. And I love the fact that you introduced agriculture and said that women have greatly impacted, uh, women have, had, actually, have actually had great impact in the agricultural sector. And we can identify with that. My mother, of course, I know her in terms of agriculture and how much she did and how much she worked to take me to school or take us to school. We can see that. The same applies to Victor. Nonetheless, you did not offer a rebuttal to your team, possibly because they did not have much to say or one or two reasons. Victor, again, maybe one thing that you need to take care of is uh, quoting the source of your evidence. Nine out of 11, my question was, what was the source? Now, nine out of 11 women. 10% of Africa's land mass is owned by women. I said, fine, that's no problem, but what is your source? Are we together? So try to cite your source the way Jack did as he was doing his presentation. Nonetheless, it was awesome. In terms of analysis and synthesis, just a good debater. And you know how to keep, to pick over from where Jack left. Wandera, Come collected, even from the way you're seated, nothing intimidates you. You know, you really believe in yourself and you really do a very good presentation. Ofafe Jericho, the challenge of being at the top is staying at the top. It's one thing to get there, but it's another thing for you to stay there. And um, uh, Troy, Gilbert, you have been there before. Uh, you know, work with the team and make them better. Uh, I think one of the greatest challenges for um, uh, the team is stage presence and stage fright, which you need to, uh, to deal with. And then, of course, um, articulating whatever it is that you want to say. Uh, Jesse, you have a smile that makes people drawn to you and they just want to listen to you. But the 
the, the, the only challenge is what's the substance, what's the content, and that for me was the missing link. The, the side of the motion that you took, where you are not saying that men mm -hmm. are the key uh, to Africa's economic um, development sustainability, you said we need both gender, which would essentially have worked in your favor. The only challenge is that you didn't seem to have researched well enough and you were not articulate in terms of making your submissions. And so you have a very strong beginning from Troy, but after that, you know, there is really nothing much to, to listen to. So you need to work on that. The judges awarded Ufafa Jericho with 63%. Please give them a round of applause. Starehe Boys Center. The judges saw it fit to award you 84%. You are our winners for the debate. Bravo to both teams for doing justice to the motion and especially to Starehe Boys High for that wonderful victory. We thank you at home for taking the time to watch. I have been your host, Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Yumbok. Catch you next time. <laughs>